Hey, photographers. Do you know what fireworks, airborne pedestrians, and tulips have in common? Shutter priority mode. Let's turn our modals to S and explore the creative effects we can photograph when we control the shutter. Some manufacturers call this time value, that's TV on the dial. It's the same thing, a slightly more appropriate name. Most of the time, I set the exposure mode to A and let the camera decide which shutter duration is best. I do that so I can adjust the aperture, controlling the depth of field and the amount of background defocus in my images. But today, in shutter priority mode, the camera's computer is going to set the aperture, while I adjust the shutter duration. These photos were taken with a bunch of cameras that I've reviewed. However, these settings and techniques work with nearly all cameras, as long as they have a shutter priority mode, S or TV on the dial. When it's automatically set, cameras typically select a duration between 1 over 125 and 1 over 1000 fractions of a second. At 1 over 125, it's usually enough to overcome any motion of the camera in my hands. Shorter durations from 1 over 500 to 1 over 1000 freeze most fast-moving subject but the camera doesn't understand that's your creative intent and can't tell when an object is frozen. Uh, maybe soon. Not now. That's why you set the shutter duration. Longer focal lengths require shorter shutter durations. A shutter duration that might be suitable at 50 millimeters may be too slow at 200 millimeters. Make a note of that. That will be on the test. Many photographers use the one over rule to determine a starting shutter duration. With a 200 millimeter lens, that would be one over 200. Anyway, as you zoom in, your movements become exaggerated and your subject moves more quickly through the frame. I'm starting with a 35 millimeter equivalent focal length of about 35 millimeters, but I know that one over 35 is much too long, so my default is one over 125. Now, all the images in the video are available on Flickr, where you can see the exposure and EXIF settings, but I'll provide the shutter duration on screen. Now, on a camera without stabilization, as I increase the shutter duration, say 1 30th of a second, 1 8th of a second, 1 half second, the shaky effects of my unsteady hands become more and more apparent as blurred motion. Uh, blur from a long duration is not the same as focus blur. Motion blur is kind of smeary, like Tom's drumstick at 1 over 125. Letting the drumstick blur enhances the image by capturing the action. Also worth noting that as the camera closes the aperture, the depth of field, the focus of the background, increases. Uh, stabilization, either optical in the lens or in body, can only help so much. In 2020, the best in-camera stabilization I tried let me handheld about half a second, even with stabilization. Eventually, longer shutter durations or longer focal lengths require a tripod. While any tripod will do, make sure it's sturdy enough to be totally steady. If it has a hook to hang a weight like a sandbag, that makes it super sturdy. <laughs> the effect now, at one half second or so, is that some things in the image don't move, like trees, buildings, and others, like pedestrians or taxi cabs, do. In general, I love the magic of longer exposures. The combination of blurred action with a static scene makes for compelling photographs. And there are other ways to exploit this. Here, I zoomed while taking a one-second exposure. As we increase our shutter durations further, at some point, the iris cannot close further and the ISO cannot go lower. So to achieve a longer duration, a neutral density filter is needed. ND filters cut the amount of light and keep your longer shutter duration images from overexposing. But eventually, as the shutter duration gets longer, the moving pedestrians disappear completely from the image. They're not in one spot long enough to register, even as a blur. Uh, remember that the next time you're at a busy tourist spot.
And here's an insider hack for long shutter durations on tripods. Use the camera's timer to delay the shutter release. That makes sure your finger pressing the shutter doesn't shake the camera. A DSLR with a mirror might also have a setting to delay the exposure until a few seconds after flipping the mirror up. Longer shutter durations also create other interesting effects, like smoothing the surface of water on a lake, 10 seconds, or a pool at night, 30 seconds. Fireworks are best with longer exposures, this is 5 seconds, and creating an ethereal waterfall, this is 1 over 15. When it's dark, Longer exposures are useful to capture enough light, and I know it's tempting to let the aperture be wide open, but this is the moment to go manual and close the iris to f16 or f22, as it makes the pinpoints of bright light clear and distinct as the longer exposure time reveals more of the scene. Interesting side effect here is that light trails are left by moving objects 23 seconds for this shot. So I showed you blurred pedestrians in a sharp scene, but consider the opposite, where the moving subject is sharp and the background is motion blurred. And this is what happens when you're capturing a passing cyclist at 1 30th of a second. The subject's speed and your focal length determine the shutter duration required. You'll also need to practice panning with moving subjects. It will take several attempts to get it just right. And that's a good transition to shutter types, mechanical electronic, because an electronic shutter at certain durations will start to shear the image. Uh, the time that the top of the image is recorded is slightly earlier than the bottom, which bends the moving object. You can see that Kim is tilted and wheels aren't round in the image taken with the electronic shutter. I'm not sure how you're going to use that creatively. Please use the comments to provide your tips for that one. And that's a good transition to very short shutter durations, because on most cameras, the very shortest shutter durations are enabled with the electronic shutter. With longer shutter durations, we were freezing the movement of some things while other things blurred. Shorter durations freeze everything, which is great if your hands are unsteady or when your object is moving very quickly. You'll find formulas involving focal lengths, but as I generally don't have a slide rule with me in my camera bag, it's, it's difficult to predict how fast you'll actually need. Uh, you'll eventually get a sense of where to start while getting it just right. Uh, seagulls at 1 over 640. A still dripping fish at 1 over 640. At 1 over 800, a swimmer coming towards us. And an airborne pedestrian. Then, although a shutter speed of 1 over 1000 seems fast, it's not enough to stop Rob's swing if that's your intent. This fountain froze at 1 over 1250. At 1 over 2000, I'm frozen mid-air. At 1 four thousandths of a second, about as fast as most cameras go, the splash of an object falling into milk. But a flash, which illuminates the scene for a very short duration, also stops action, even with a slow shutter like 1 over 125. The aperture does impose some limitations on available shutter durations. On a sunny day with a minimum ISO of 200, with the aperture closed to f22, the longest shutter is about 1 15th. That's when you need ND. Or with the aperture open to f2.8, the shortest shutter duration is about 1 over 2000. You'll need higher ISOs for shorter durations. Now, Auto ISO provides some additional flexibility. Make sure you've set the upper limit to your noise tolerance. If your camera has shutter priority mode, you're all set to try out any of these techniques. Well, the ones that appeal to you anyway. Be prepared if the first pictures don't turn out. And don't, don't give up. Just keep creating until you run out of card space or battery power. 
Now, on my channel, I don't accept sponsorships. I don't stop in the middle to promote some product or service, nor do I allow YouTube to interrupt my videos with mid-roll ads. Those decisions make this a better channel for you, but they do have a financial impact, so I am very grateful to those of you who have decided to support this channel by becoming a member. And if membership is for you, please use the join button below. But subscribers need not worry, no content will be behind a paywall. And I do read and reply to all relevant and civil comments and questions. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.